Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Once again, we come to your presence, Lord Father. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here, Lord Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We invite you, Lord. Thank you for this offering, Lord. Bless this offering, Lord. I cover the precious blood of this offering, Lord. Multiply this and use for your purpose, Lord Father. Bless each one of us who are here, Lord Father. Yes, Lord. Father, when we, we so see in your kingdom, oh Lord Father, we experience that you will bless us more and more, Lord Father. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We are nothing, Lord Father, mm -hmm. in front of you. But even though, thank you, Lord, you are continuously providing us, Lord, and protecting us, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray each one of us who are here, Lord Father, intervene in each, each and every situation, Lord Father. Not in our good time, but in our hard time, Lord Father. Yes, Lord. We heard the testimony, Lord Father. Really, it really hurts, Lord Father. But my heart spoke, Lord Father. That God, you spoke in my heart, Lord Father, that you said, I am the Lord. And we know that our birth time and in our death time is in your hand, Lord Father. We don't know, Lord Father what is good for us, but you know that what is better for us, Lord Father. Yes. yes, Lord. You know our better future, O Master, Lord. So I just pray, Dr. Lord Father, I just give thanks, Lord Father, that yes, we are standing here, we are breathing, Lord Father. We thank you for our life, O Lord Father. Thank you for our family, our children, O Lord Father. Yes, yes Lord. I pray, Pastor Ashish, that he is bringing your word, Lord Father. Whatever message he prepared, Lord Father, we know, I know that you spoke in his heart, Lord Father. Yes. Open our heart, open our mind, Lord Father. Yes, Lord. I pray that Jesus, you are the center in our life, Lord yes. Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Father, for the message, Lord Father. I submit Pastor Ashish and this service into your mighty hand. Yes. Jesus' mighty hand. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister. Thank you so much for your lovely prayer. Truly. Blessed. Church, are you blessed? Amen. Come on, church. Are you blessed? Yes. Amen. 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 We are blessed. We are blessed to be in His presence. We are blessed to be called the children of God. Yes. And we are blessed to be chosen by Him. Amen. 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 All right. So let's look into the Word of God. All right. Are you ready to receive the Word of God? Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. So let's look into the Word of God. But before that, let me. Okay, let me move the slide. Wonderful. You know, the Word of God is so important in our life because it's just not something which is written in the, in the scriptures. It is a living word. And that makes all the difference. So many books have written, right? So many books have, so many scriptures are there. But the living word, a word which talks, speaks to us, touches us, changes us, transforms us, is only given in the Bible. But that is the true living word of God. And it impacts life. And that is why, if you look in, in, in across the world, that is why this book is also feared. Why do you think the people the people want to burn Bibles? They don't allow Bibles to come into the country because no because, because they know the Bible has a transforming power. And the transforming power is that it reveals the truth. It just shows the truth. It is the person who is reading it, who is listening to it. It is for that person to decide whether they believe it or they do not believe it. It doesn't impose or doesn't force you to believe it. It just reveals the truth. Just like the doctor. When you go to a doctor and the doctor says you need to go do these examinations, these tests, those tests, so many tests that they ask you to do. What is the purpose for that? We cannot see from inside what is inside of us. The doctor cannot see what is inside of us, how things are functioning. So he needs those tests to be done. So with those tests, they are able to see, tell us, okay, now this is the truth about your body. And this is what you should be doing. This is a medication, this is a treatment, this is an operation, this is a surgery. This is what you need to do. The choice is ours. We accept it or we reject it, or we ignore it, right? So today as we come before the throne of grace and mercy and ask the Lord to bless us with, with His word, let's just close, close our eyes for a moment and let us pray.
Lord, we just come before you, Lord. Humbling our hearts, Lord. Yes. We come before you, Lord, knowing and believing, Lord Jesus, that yes, we are unworthy, Lord. Yes. Unworthy, Lord, even to receive and hear your word, Lord. But you are the kind and compassionate God who always has mercy and love and affection for his children, Lord. And the scripture, Lord, every word which is written there, Lord, it, you have written it, you have spoken it, it for us, Lord, so that we may listen to it, we may read it, and we may meditate upon it, and the truth may be revealed to us, Lord. But then again, Lord, you have left the choice to us, Lord. We may we need to decide what we believe, what we do not believe, what we accept, what we do not accept. Today, Lord, as we come before your throne of Lord Jesus, Lord, Lord, we ask to give us listening ears, Lord. A heart which is when you receive your word, Lord. Lord, our mind, Lord, which is able to understand each word which comes from you, Lord Jesus. And help us, Lord, to transform to be into your image, Lord. Yes. That is what we are here for, Lord. And Lord, as I stand here, Lord, to give your word to your people, including myself, Lord, bless me, anoint me, that every word which comes out of my mouth would be for your people, including myself, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I submit this time into your hands. In your name, Lord, we say, Amen. 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 So today, friends, as we will be, I will be sharing on when God intervenes. When God intervenes. You know, uh, I was actually not, I was struggling in terms of, yet again, I was struggling in terms of what word I should bring. I'm prepared for next Sunday, but I was prepared for today. <laughs> and I was just doing a lot of stress in the office also, uh, long, very long hours in the office, and so, so, so much of stress was going on there. And then fi finally, uh, the Lord led me to people calling me, and then led me to a, to a scripture verse, and, and uh, told me, to, I need to speak about this, which is when God intervenes. Okay? And I didn't know what to speak about it, how to speak about it, but I, I, I was just looked to, to the Lord to guide me on that. And the last 24 to 4, 36 hours, last 24 to 36 hours, I received four calls. Four calls from different people from Hong Kong, from outside of Hong Kong, to people who are to people of God who are facing similar situations and challenges in their life, very difficult situations. And they were just up there, they were just calling me, what should I do? And this is happening, that is happening, this is happening. Oh, lots of many things were happening. Health issues, relationship issues, financial issues, lot of things, all combination. And they had more or less similar questions in their mind. And they are called loving people, right? And the question, there are three questions which I could jot down is, how long, how long, can I let this happen? There were some people who uh, were being uh, pushed into, into a lot of negative things. How long should I let this happen? When will God intervene? And when this question comes, when will God intervene? It always leads to, will God intervene at all? Will He intervene? You know, the answer to the third question is easy. I can say with, with full emphasis, and full authority that yes, God will intervene. The second question in regards to when, again I can say very clearly, I can answer that question and say no, I don't know the answer. So I don't know the answer. Only God knows the answer to that, when he will intervene. Now the first question is a tricky question which I believe, not only that, all the three questions I'm going to, I'm going to try and answer through the message which I'm, giving, I'm going to give today to you and to myself. Okay? It's a very humble attempt to answer these questions. Now if I ask you, how often we come into a difficult situation where we feel trapped, we feel helpless, we feel hopeless, and we desperately seek God to intervene in that situation in a very miraculous way. Many times. I mean, if you, if you look into our lives, we, we, we know we have seen so many situations like this happening in our lives. We say, God, intervene. Intervene. I mean, I have been uh, through these so many times. And I'm sure that all of you must have also been going through those similar times. You know, at times we 
we want God to intervene with all His power and might and strength and remove all the challenges, all the negativity, all the enemy work, uh, the, the enemies which are doing things against us, everything in one go. Just like the fire on Sodom and Gomorrah, everything, it just came and all the evil were wiped out. Something similar, we want God to intervene in such a powerful way that everything is washed off. Sometimes we want God to come as a strong wind or a very high wave and take away, wash away all our challenges which are there, things which we, the filth that it is around us, we are not able to understand how to do it, how to come out of it. We ask the Lord, Lord, come in that way. So many times we ask God to intervene and take back into time so that we are able to ratify or rectify something wrong which we have said or done. So many times we want God to intervene immediately in situations when we are surrounded by most difficult situations in the midst of disagreements, in the midst of arguments, situations where you are not able to understand each other, situations where others are not able to understand you. I mean, we, all of us have been in such situations, right? Am I wrong in saying that? All of us have been in that situation. But in all the situations, we have sought God. The truth is, friends, that God does intervene. He does intervene. This is a basic truth. Put it in your heart. Put it in your mind. He will intervene. But the second truth is also there. The second truth is that God will intervene in His own time. Yes. And in His own way. But still, doesn't matter. Because God will intervene. That is underlined. That is key for us. So today I just want to look at Acts 16, uh, verses 16 to, to 18. Now uh, let me pick up my Bible. Now we will go to Acts. It is, I will show it on the screen also, but I want to read from the Bible. The versions may be different. Okay. 16, verses 16 to 18. Okay. Now this uh, once when we were we were going uh, to the place of prayer, this is Paul and Silas. They were going to a place of prayer. We were we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money uh, for her owners. She was a slave girl by fortune telling. Now this girl followed Paul and Silas and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept uh, this up for many days. Finally Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ I command you to come out of her. At that moment the Spirit left her. So obviously when the Spirit left her, she didn't have that fortune telling uh, the authority, right? She was not able to predict the fortune. So, her owners were not happy. That the money which they were earning, it's gone now. And the girl is free. So, they basically they were unhappy. They seized Paul and Silas. They beat them. And, and a lot, 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 lot of things happened. So, I will read from verse 22 then. Okay? The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrate ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into, into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. Is it there? Yeah. Okay. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and other prisoners were listening to them. Okay? Next slide. Hmm. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. All At once all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, 
we are all here. The jailer called for the light and rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, Believe in Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. You and your household. So you know the passage here speaks about the trial of the, the, or the persecution which Paul and Silas went through. And this passage is all about how God intervenes. Okay? The God, God intervened in the life of the slave girl who was being misused by her owners and she was filled with the evil spirit. God intervened into her life and freed her. Not only from the, the physical bondage she was in, but also from the spiritual bondage. Evil spirit left her. God, God intervened in the situation of Paul and Silas where we, read, we, just, we just saw they were, they were how, in what kind of situation they were in. God intervened into the, into the situation of the jailer who was just about to kill himself. And he filled and made him free and filled him in his household with joy. Let's look at some of the verses which are, which are here. Verse 25 it says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, singing hymns to God, and other prisoners were listening to them. Now imagine their situation. In spite of being dragged, in spite of being stripped, beaten, severely flogged, and being thrown in the innermost prison where it's dark, and not only that, their feet were fastened in stocks. All of that, not for the wrong reason. No, it's okay. All of that, not for the wrong reason, but for the right reason. They had done nothing wrong. Right? They had done nothing wrong. They had, they had just freed. They had just freed that girl. That's all. From evil spirit. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But still, they were in the Bible. They, they were in the... They had to face all, the, all these. Being dragged, stripped, beaten, flogged, thrown in the inner cell and then being fasted and stocks means put in chains. But in spite of all that, what were they doing? They were praying. But the Bible doesn't say what they were praying. Hmm? Maybe, but look at this, imagine the situation. Maybe they were praying, Lord, you were just trying to do what you want, you had asked us to do. You were trying to do your will. You were trying to bless the people and you let this thing happen to us. See where we are. We are bleeding all over. We are paining all over, aching all over. And you have not intervened. Will you intervene into our life? Will you? Why did you stop them? When they were beating us, when they were put, uh, putting us in the magistrate, why did you make us help, send, send, send us an angel to get us released? But why did you show your power? All these questions would have come into their mind, right? I mean, do, do you think they had, they had a reason? Any other reason? Anything else to pray for? But they are hurting, guys. They are hurting. They are paining. They might as well be complaining because they did not. I mean, the, the, the reason for uh, they could not understand the reason for why God allowed this to happen to them. We know it. They did not know the reason. The reason was the jailer. They were in the jail. They were put in the jail because the jailer and his family were to be saved. Right? But we know it because we know the story. But Paul Silas didn't know. So obviously all these questions would be coming into, into, the, into, the, into the mind. Well, let me ask you, if you would have been in a similar situation, what thoughts would have come into your mind? I admit, friends, when I am surrounded by challenges, where I am not able to bring things into order, where I feel I am hopeless, where I am helpless, I cry out to pray. I just cry out to the Lord. And my prayer is more of a complaint. Let's, I'll be honest. It's more of a complaint. Why is this happening to me, Lord? Where did I go wrong? I can't do your will. You have chosen me to do this. Why am I facing these, these challenges? All these things come into into, in, in, into into the mind. And it all gets added up 
into my prayer to the Lord. Unintentionally. And it's human nature, nothing wrong. It's human nature. I mean, what kind of prayer would come out of our heart when we are hurting, when we are paining, when we are uh, in despair, when we are sad, when we are hopeless, when we are helpless? It will come naturally. We may complain, but Paul and Cyrus were not. I'm telling you that Paul and Cyrus, when they were praying, they were not complaining. And how do I know that? The next two words says that in the, in the verse. They were praying and they were singing. singing. They were singing hymns to God. Now when you sing to God, you don't complain, right? It's not like the Bollywood movies where the hero or the heroine has a, have a sad situation, they're facing a challenge and then suddenly a sad song comes up. It's nothing like that in real life. So they were, they were not singing a sad song. They were singing hymns. Hymns are of praise and worship to God. Beloved, Paul and Silas were praying and praising God. And let me tell you, when you are the, 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 these two things combined, there is power. The praise itself has so much of power. Praise God in spite of the situation, circumstances around us. And that can bring God's intervention into our situations. You know, in the Old Testament, in Chronicles, Book of Chronicles, you will see King Joseph had, Joseph had sent out his sent out people to sing and to praise God in front of his army when he was going to have, have, a, have, a, have a battle. But he sent his, these people ahead before the, before the army, the soldiers, to sing and praise God. Just imagine the other, other enemy on the other side, they would be thinking, what are these guys doing? We are here to kill them and they are coming outside and they are beating their drums and they are singing, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. But what did God do there? God gave Joseph, King Joseph a victory in that battle. Same way friends, if we sing to the Lord in a challenging time, in troubled times. God will give us victory. Raise a hallelujah in the song that we sang today. Hope will arise from where? From the ashes. Ashes is the end. Finished. The gone. Done. But where? From that ashes, hope will arise. When I put the song there today in the morning, uh, here, I didn't, I didn't realize that this was my message. The song was is my message for today. So yes, and the song has touched, touched us. So while praying, you know, while praying is seeking God's will into our life, praise is a declaration of faith that God will into me. If you combine the two, you are praying God, you are let your will. I mean, well, I want, I seek your help. Help me. When you are you are praising Him, when you are saying glory to Him, you what you are saying is, God, I know you have you are doing this. I have faith, I have trust, you will do it. You will intervene. The same verse also says about midnight. It starts with about midnight. About midnight, what happened? About midnight in verse 26, suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the chain all of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors opened and everyone's chain came loose. Not as soon as they, they Paul and Silas entered the prison, put in prison, not at the same time. Not in the morning, but at an anointed time. At a time chosen by God. God's own time, which is here, given here at midnight. Midnight. Now, I mean, have you ever noticed that God's timing usually don't match with our timing? It very rarely matches up with our own timing. I mean, if we would have been, in, let's say, if we would have been given authority in this to do something for Paul and Silas, we would have immediately said, okay, this is happening, send an angel. Angel, go, save them. And we would expect God to do the same thing. Paul and Silas, oh, my children, they are doing so much for me. They are suffering. 
Gabriel, quickly go release them. But no. God held back. Sometimes God seems late because there are other things involved and it's only God knows. And that need to be in place which we would never know. Or we would come to know it later on. Like for example the death which you, you spoke about. We don't know. What is God's plan in that? Today we may be, we may be grieved. So many questions will be why God, young person, uh, with, a good, with a good future, bright future, parents, siblings, friends, so many things come to our mind. And that's what I used to go. Why? But I can promise you one thing, sister, you will come, you will get the news in the near future why it happened. We have we, we as, as our family we had a lot of pressure with my regards my father's death. But father died. I would say it's not it wasn't good, but God had a reason behind it. And I can say standing here that the reason is justified. It's fully justified. God is good. So, there also for Paul and Silas to be there and God waited till midnight. Why midnight? Because in according to the Roman uh, procedures at midnight the roll or the uh, what do you call it uh, uh, shift like in jobs you have shifts right? The shift of the jailer was changing. So the jailer for whom the Lord had put Paul and Silas there came to take up his role after midnight, at midnight. Before that there was another jailer. So that is why God chose the, the time. And we know it that the jailer was the main reason why Paul and Silas had been put into the prison. Beloved, God will intervene. But it will be in his own time because he knows the best time and what is best for us. Verse 26 also says, suddenly there was such a violent sorry okay. suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Beloved, when God moves, heaven and earth shake and tremble. When God moves, God intervenes, when God intervenes into our life, he will not only shake our roots but he will also shake and uproot the foundations of our enemies of all the negativity which is there of all the challenges which is there or challenge situations which are surrounded which are surrounding darkness which is there he will dispel it when God moves the things start to shake and the verse also says that at once all the present doors flew open so when God intervenes, closed doors are forced to be open. And how, how, what led to all this? The earthquake to happen, closed doors to be open? Prayer and praise. Sing, sing, sing songs. That led to this happening. Beloved, if you are facing closed doors, pray and praise God. Sing songs to God. And His intervention will open closed doors for you. New avenues, new opportunities, renewed relationships, they will happen. There's no doubt about it. It will happen. And don't forget to thank God for answering our prayers when these closed doors open, when things are mended. You know, uh, there was a believer friend who was talking to an atheist friend. And this guy was totally negative and he didn't want to speak anything about God. And the believer, of course, was trying to teach him about God. And this atheist friend said, no, 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 don't tell me about, about your God. He is does not exist. I don't believe him. The people said, why are you saying all this? Try him once. Try him once and then you'll see. So he said, no, no, I have tried him once and he failed me. And the believer was surprised, what is this guy saying? He said, okay, what happened? And he said, you know, once I was, uh, I had gone fishing in my small boat and I was trapped in a huge storm. There was a huge gale and there was storm, there was high waves and I was just about to die and I was just about to drown there. My boat was filled with water. And he says, you have told me about God. I thought, okay, I'll pray. So I went on my knees 
I folded my hands, I closed my eyes, and I prayed, God, if you're the same God who, if you really exist, then you rescue me from this situation. If you rescue me from this situation, I promise you that I will follow you all the days of my life. So the believer said, okay, then, okay. What happened? Did God, did God save you? Did God do anything? The atheist said, no, 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 God did not even raise a single uh, a finger in itself. He didn't do anything. I was just saved because the rescue boat came and saved me. Now he didn't realize the rescue boat was sent by God. So sometimes we ignore how God intervenes in our life, how God blesses our life. And we let it pass. Same thing with, with, with this guy. So friends, don't forget to thank God when he answers your prayer and opens closed doors. Verse 26 also says, All at once the present doors opened and everyone's chains came loose. When God intervenes, not only closed doors open, but also chains will fall off. Chains will fall off. Beloved, not only for Paul and Silas, but also others were set free. When God intervenes, Nothing can stop the will of God to happen. Amen to that? Come on, church. Amen to that? Yes. Amen. And all this happened as a result of an earthquake. Right? As an earthquake. No? Just listen to what I'm saying. All of us must have experienced small, big earthquakes in our life. Or we would have seen the devastation done by earthquakes on news, or on, on WhatsApp uh, videos that we receive. Right? Earthquakes happening across the world. What kind of devastation it happens in, in a natural earthquake? The walls fall down, buildings fall down, houses collapse, and people get hurt, people die. Right? Natural earthquakes don't open closed doors. Have you heard that? Natural earthquakes opening doors, natural earthquake breaking chains, letting people set free. It doesn't happen in a, in a natural earthquake, right? But when God intervenes, a supernatural earthquake takes place. And in a supernatural earthquake, with God's intervention, closed doors are open. And these closed doors are, we are all trapped in a spiritual prison. All of us are in a spiritual prison. When God intervenes, those doors are open. We are all in spiritual chains. And bondages, when God intervenes, those spiritual chains are broken. Beloved, remember that all this happened only after they had prayed, not before that. Only after they had prayed and, 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 and praised God that He opened the doors. Now, do you think God would have, would have done the same thing or that opening the doors and letting them lose the chains being becoming free if they had just prayed? Complained, God, what is this happening? Why? The other one, this is paining, that is paining, I'm bleeding here, I'm bleeding there. These miracles would not have happened. They happened because of the combination of two powerful things prayer and worship. Prayer and worship. Beloved, what chains are holding you back? What chains are not letting you go free? Depression, fear, anxiety. Sickness, heartbreak, finances, strained relationships, worry, whatever it is, start praying and praising God. And you will see that these chains will automatically come off you and you will be free. So in the passage that we saw today, we saw that no matter how bad the situation may be, if we pray to God and we sing praises to Him, He will intervene. If God could intervene in the slaves, in the slave girl's life in that time, if God could intervene in the situation of Paul and Silas, if God could intervene in the life of the jailer and, and his family that then they were saved, I believe he will intervene in your life, in my life today also. Because God is the same yesterday, today and the future. He never changes. Amen? Amen. Beloved. God intervene. God will intervene, but His way 
may not be as you want it to be. You know, in the Old Testament, we see how Prophet Samuel is sent by God to choose an anointed king and anoint a king for Israel. Now, Israel, the earlier king was King Saul. Now, King Saul was chosen by the people, okay, not by God. And King Saul had disobeyed God. So, God had rejected him. That he is not the king. So for a period of time, Israel didn't have a king. And since they, uh, they didn't have a king, the, they, they, were, they were at war with Philistines and the Philistines were winning. They were winning. And it hurt Prophet Samuel. God heard the pleas of Samuel. God heard the pleas of the people. And then he came to Prophet Samuel and said, Go and anoint a king. Choose a king and anoint him. So Samuel went to Bethlehem where God had told him and God had told him to go to a house, the house of Jesse in Bethlehem to, to anoint one of, the, one of the sons of Jesse as a new king. And God did not give him any more details. Okay? And there were, there, there were seven, seven sons of Jesse. Which one is to be king? Right? So just imagine, imagine Samuel might have had some expectation in terms of how a king would look like. Oh, naturally, right? So he would have thought that, okay, I've seen King Saul. King Saul is bulky, heavy, strong, and looks like a king. I'm sure if God has rejected him, he's doing some, somebody else. This person would be stronger, be bigger, mightier than King Saul. Maybe he would, he would have expected that this guy would be a he-man with bulging muscles, uh, with bicep and tricep really strong, and Solid, uh, solid, solid apps, right? Six apps and all that. It is in his mind. You know, this king. I mean, come on, king. Right? A king. If you look at, uh, if you think about a king, we vision him as something really, really strong. But you know, Samuel was wrong because God's intervention in this matter was totally different and contrast to Samuel's ex expectations. So let me read it from First Samuel. Okay. I'm not going to read the whole passage, but I'm going to read to you parts of it. Okay, from Samuel 16. Today, it's strange because I took up the passage from, from Acts 16. And this passage is from Samuel 16. Okay. What it means, I don't know, but still. That's there, that's a, so Samuel 16, first Samuel 16, was verses 5 to 13. Okay? And follow me as I read. This is, right? Yeah, okay. So, then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab, Eliab, Eliab was one of the sons, and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. He was a very strong built man. The Lord goes not at the, at the things man looks, man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Ab 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 Abinad Bath and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one. Jesse then had Shama pass by and then Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this, this one. Jesse has seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But, the, but Samuel said to them, the Lord has not chosen these. Is it there? Has not chosen, uh, Lord, okay. Has not chosen, chosen these. Now imagine, seven sons, big build, strong. I mean, uh, if you, I don't know whether you have seen any of the Mr. Universe and these combinations when go on. These guys come and uh, this and that, they show their muscles. I mean, just imagine them. These seven sons are coming in one by one out in front of, of Sam Prophet Samuel, and they must be flexing their muscles. Oh, yes, I am the king, and they will be coming with a chest high and all that, right? Just imagine that to show, yes, I could be the king. I'm the king of Israel. So they would be coming with the aura, oh, yes, I can be the king. And what is Samuel doing? Rejecting one by one, one by one, one by one. So he needs his mind also. Samuel was thinking, this looks good. He looks good. He looks like a king. 
Okay, now this one. Oh, this one is okay. This one is okay. Seven. God rejects seven. And then what? What is in the? So he he asked Jesse. Samuel asked Jesse. Are these all the sons you have? Well, he didn't. Samuel didn't know how many sons Jesse had. So he asked an innocent question. There is still the youngest Jesse to answer, but he is tendering the sheep. Samuel said, "Send for him, and he and we will not sit down until he arrives." So they all were standing. Eh? They were not sitting, and they were standing. So he sent and had him brought in. Now David was ruddy, with uh, with a fine appearance and handsome features. Nothing very majestic, strong. I think about him. And then the Lord said, "Rise and anoint him. He is the one." So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. And Samuel went then to Ramah. So friends. Here we see that even Prophet Samuel had different vision of in terms of expectation how God will intervene, what kind of king will will be will be given to Israel. Every one of us has a tendency to anticipate what God will do to resolve our problems. You know, when we come to the God with the problems, most of the times we also try to tell him the solution. Also, for well, God, this is a problem, but this is all this this is the way I want it to be. Just like a small child who was praying uh, during Christmas time uh, to God, God, please, I want this particular uh, toy. It's, uh, I know it's a very expensive toy, and, and I, but I really want it. I, I've been craving for it, Lord. Please give give it to me. Tell Santa to buy it for me, and also tell Santa to go to this particular shop in this particular street. There, there, there she, the, uh, he can speak to the to the manager, and the manager is willing to will to give him discount. So with the problem, a solution is provided. No, this is from a child, innocent. But sometimes we do the same thing. God, I am in this problem. I have, I have done this. Only way I can come out of this if this, this, this thing happens. We provide him. We give him the solution. Right? God, this is the solution I want. But God doesn't work that way. Sometimes you may get an answer. Which is totally different from what we asked from God, and that's what had happened with Prophet Samuel also. Right? A different David was anointed king, and he was one of the best kings which Israel could ever ever have. Fine, he was not a very strong person. He did sin, but then he was a man after God's own heart. So, be assured, friends, that whatever God. Will give us would be much better than whatever we could have asked for us or desired for. Remember, He supplies us all our needs, not merely our wants. Not merely our wants. You know, uh, from I was reading this, I was touched by this uh, explanation which was given. The former Boston Red Red Sox player, he John John Pollywood. Uh, his infant daughter had a very rare genetic disease, and during one of the medical treatments, this uh, this, this baseball player he was he, he was basically asked to hold the infant child in his arms. Infant child, right? Because if you don't hold, and the and the, and the doctors were supposed to give him into the child intravenous injection. A small child, infant, and when when he was holding the child, uh, Oliver. Uh, John basically described the look which he saw when he was looking at the child. He saw a question coming up from the child to him, and what that question was: "What's going on, Dad? I thought you were my dad, and you were you would be protecting me, but here you are holding me down and allowing these people to poke needles in me and it's paining me. How can you say you love me?" And allow somebody to let this, uh, uh, let uh, somebody do this to me. A very valid thing, a very valid observation. And this John basically saw these questions in the eyes of the infant he was holding. You know, knowing that even if he could tell her what was why it was happening, she was too small to understand it. And so what John did was, he just smiled in his mind. He said, "My child, you need to only trust me." 
you need to trust me. But John saw a very important faith message in that experience. And this is what he said. He said, sometimes with our sufferings, we look to God and say, God, this does not make sense. I'm getting hammered here and you and you could change it. But you're not doing it. I'm sure. Then he answers his own question. He says, I'm sure he's looking at us and saying, I can't tell you why I'm allowing this to happen because you will not understand. But trust me, it is for your best interest. Trust me. Beloved, you may not understand the way in which God intervenes. But the biggest thing is, God does intervene. And He intervenes according to His time and His plan. God, you know, people have been waiting for a Savior to come. Right? A King, a Savior to come. They expected a King to be born. God answered the people's prayer in the most unexpected way. The king was born in a stable and was placed in a manger. The people expected the king, the king to come in shining armor, riding on a, on a horse. But God answered the people's prayer in the most unexpected way. Once again, Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey. The people expected the king to wage war against the enemies. Jesus answered the people's prayer yet again in the most unexpected way when Jesus taught the people to forgive their enemies and to do good to them. People expected the king who would come would defeat the Romans. Jesus, God answered the people's prayer again in the most unexpected way. Jesus was arrested and crucified by these very Romans. Killed, crucified. And finally God answered the people's prayer in the most unexpected ways by raising Jesus from the dead. Amen to that? Yes. Amen. Beloved, the birth, life and death of, and resurrection of Jesus proves one thing and one thing alone that God, our Father in heaven, loves us. And he, if He loves us, He is interested in our lives. He wants us to be part, He wants Him to be part of our lives. He is willing to intervene in our situations. All that we need to do is ask Him in prayer and continue to show our faith in singing songs of praise and worship to Him. He will intervene. Can we do that? Now let's go back to the, question, the three questions which I posed in the, in the beginning, right? The three questions. How long can I can I allow this to happen. When will God intervene? Will God intervene? How long? People who are suffering for a long time, who are battered, misused by bad people, how long will they, they, they should be suffering? Yes, God does, does say that, oh, no, no, this. Be humble, forgiving, loving. But at the same time, God says, you have to be wise. You have to be wise. And for that, I need to look into this verse, okay? Luke 10. Luke 10, verses 5 to 11. Let me read it for you. Is it on the screen? Yes. Wonderful. You can follow me. So this is where Jesus sends out the, his disciples, the seven two, two by two, okay, and he, and he says, go into, into 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 the township and each home and bless them. This is what he says: When you enter a house, first say peace to this house. If the man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Be wise. Stay in that house, eating and drinking, and whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Yeah. For the worker, do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcome, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God is near you. When, but when you enter a town where you are not welcomed, 
Go into the streets, the streets and say, even the dust of your town that sticks to our feet, we wipe off against you. Yet be sure, the kingdom of God is there. Use your wisdom. Where you are not welcomed, you are, you are, what are you required to do? You are required to give, just speak the word of God and move away. That does not work. You have, you have done whatever you are called to do. You are not, not supposed to go there, sit there and continue doing that and get persecuted and then get killed. That's not wisdom. God says be wise. Don't let yourself be pushed in a corner. Rise up. Stand up. Be strong. Otherwise God will no, not have given us wisdom. Continue doing what God wants us to do. That's all. We get beaten up again you start doing it. God says you need to be wise. The second, ask, second question was will God intervene? He will intervene, friends. He will, but in his own time, in his own way. Last one was, will God intervene? Yes. yes. He will intervene, friends. Do not give up. Always look up. He has never failed us in the past. He will not fail us today also. And his plans for us are good to prosper us and not to harm us. So claim that promise for our life. Claim that promise for our life. May I ask you to stand, please? Let's just close our eyes for a moment and try to absorb this truth. I want you to look at the circumstances you are in, the challenges which you are facing. It could be anything. Just reflect for a moment all those things, I'm sure that they will be on your mind. Because we are living and breathing those challenges. They are all around us. And ask the Lord, Lord, intervene in this situation. Intervene in this situation. I will continue to glorify your name. I will continue to sing your praises. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this word, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for revealing to us, Lord, what we need to do, Lord. If you want you, Lord, intervene in our situations, Lord. Yes, some of other, Lord, we need to come to you, Lord, on our knees, Lord. Hope I had folded, Lord, asking you, Lord Jesus, to intervene, Lord. Telling you, Lord Jesus, yes, this is what's happening, Lord. We know that you already know what's happening, the challenges which are in our life, Lord. But in obedience, we need to come to you and speak from our mouth, Lord, and tell you, Lord, just like we do to our, uh, to our earthly parents, Lord Jesus, that this is what I'm going through, this is the challenge which I'm facing. But Lord, we want to speak praises to you also, Lord. Knowing and believing, Lord, that yes, you will intervene in this situation, Lord, that you have heard a prayer, Lord, and you have not only heard a prayer, you are going to answer a prayer, Lord Jesus. In that faith, Lord, we are going to sing hymns to you. We are going to sing songs of praises to you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, it may not be easy, Lord. But, Lord, we know that if you are in us, you are with us, Lord. Your spirit is with us, Lord. We would be able to do it. Lord, enable us to make this a habit, Lord. Because, Lord, challenges are part of our life, Lord. Help us, Lord, to overcome it, Lord. To be stronger than those challenges, Lord. By praying to you, Lord, and worshipping you and sing to you, Lord Jesus. Yes, our Father, Lord, we know, Lord, that you will intervene, Lord. You will, there will be an earthquake, Lord, a spiritual earthquake, Lord, which will come and transform situations, Lord, where doors will be opened, Lord, where chains will be broken, Lord Jesus. Curses will be broken, Lord, our Father, Lord. Yes, our Father, and we would be set free, Lord. The Spirit would live in us, Lord Jesus. We thank you, our Father. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you know our situations, Lord. We ask you to intervene, Lord. Intervene, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In your name, Lord, we say. Amen. Amen.